Welcome to another Saturday night and taking it to the nub. I'm your host, Boston Jimmy. And tonight we have a we have a really cool show tonight because I have a panel of mobile cigar lounge owners. Um, this is a big thing growing in the industry. We don't talk enough about them. We all know about our local bricks and mortars. We know about our online stores. But these, these, these folks that have mobile lounges, and I've been in a few of them, uh, are pretty spectacular, and they bring a special dimension to the cigar industry. So without further ado, I want to bring in this panel, and there may be some more that join as the show goes on. I'll just kick this off real quick. Um, I want to thank you for joining and taking time out for a Saturday evening to talk about mobile cigar lounges. This is your gig. I love what you guys do. Um, I've been in a number of different mobile lounges over the last few years. I think you are a incredibly new dimension in the cigar industry. It has been growing and more and more are getting involved. But before we do that, let's talk about what we may be smoking right now or drinking. I have a clown cigar tonight, which I've had in my humidor for about a year and a half that I'm going to fire up. What are you smoking, Joey? Oh, man, you're putting me on the spot. I'm at yeah, home. All right. I'm not. I'm smoking Malibu. <laughs> 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 nice. <laughs> right. Damn, bro. You put me on the spot. It's Jimmy, okay. I'm there with you, buddy. All right, let's go. Uh, let's go to Andy. Yeah. Uh, Perdomo 10th anniversary, sun grown. Nice, nice. So. How about how about my boy Hollywood Tony, right? Yes, sir. I just got done smoking a Jaime Garcia. Oh, top yeah. notch. Nice. And Brian. Well, I'm uh, I'm in the same boat, Jimmy. I'm at home, so uh, I got a little bourbon, and uh, but I do have a, a nice of Salem uh, right here, 13 that I would uh, was was thinking about um, trying to get over to the trailer, but I forgot there was an hour time difference, so I didn't have time to do that. So I set up shop <laughs> right here, and I, I'm I'm with Jimmy on this. I just got the the beverage today. Mobile cigar lounges. Let's just really quick tell me. How old your mobile cigar lounge is so we can see who's been doing it the longest. We'll start with Brian. We're actually in the process of uh, launching here in a, actually a couple of weeks and uh, just uh, just getting into it. So I've done a lot of research over the last few years and um, really trying to uh, make it make it perfect from the get, which I know we're going to have some some hurdles on the way um, after talking to these guys and hanging with these guys for a long time. Um, but yeah, so we're just getting going. All right. How about uh, Tony? Uh, two years in April. Two years. Andy? Yeah. I'm just getting started as well. I'm uh, all right. getting all my ducks in a row, and this summer going to hit it hard. All right. Looks like uh, Joey's OG here. Oh, the OG. I'll be <laughs> September of 2018. Let's go. September of 2018, and you were just on and hosting a seminar where I think you're at a, at a million dollars plus now in revenue coming in. So you've done phenomenal in the concept of running e a shop or even a mobile. Yeah, you know it's been it's been a fun four years. It, it's been um, it's a lot of learning curves. You know we have an awesome team. And we're just looking to kill it for 2023. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the goal of a mobile cigar lounge, where would you put that? Is that to sell cigars, to do events? Um, what, what, what's the, the play on that as opposed to a brick and mortar? I think to bring that experience to them, um, have that, that unique experience at a, at a wedding, at a, at a car show, at an event, um, just, you know, bring that to them, sell cigars, have a place for people to sit down, relax, enjoy a cigar where they're out. And, you know, that's, that's kind of our plan. 
Yep. And one of my goals is just to reach more people because a lot of people will be intimidated on a cigar lounge or a tobacco shop. I mean, there's some like hookah tobacco shop places that like I don't even want to go into. And so just having a little either trailer, tent, whatever your setup is, having that out at a at a festival or like a downtown uh, city party, if it's allowed, um, you know, you can get people just passing by talking, get them interested in cigars or ask questions and just share this love that we have of cigars with all these other people. And when we talk about being at events, I believe Hollywood, Tony is uh, at the Barrett auction right now. I am background so you did you bring your lounge there yes i did check it out can we see it yeah uh i don't know if i can flip the camera or not very nice hold on you get to walk away a little bit very nice yeah, oh like you got a whole video. setup outside too look at that oh, yeah. is that that what you normally do yes sir that's very cool. You getting a lot of traffic chairs. today? Oh, yeah. Lots of traffic. Today was day one, family day. Um, so it's kind of slow, but um, it was still good. Better than last year. Nice. I like your setup, man. That's pretty cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So do you do that too, Joe? We set up an outside kind of grassy area and make it convenient, or you drive people around? Yeah, so we, we usually have two experiences where one, we could have the, the mobile unit that's going to be there. Uh, I could share it right here. It's kind of like a, where people could go in. Pretty much you could fit anywhere between 12 to 15 people. Uh, and then we have a kind of like an outdoor proponent where, where you know, they don't have room to have to be at the lounge or to be uh, to have at their house or, or, or at their venue. So usually we have someone that goes there and brings like uh you know pretty much the cigar experience there i could bring up a picture here we go mm. so we show up you know we set up a table and then we, we have the experience there as well okay so you do both so you have both the, the mobile experience and you also just do events with pop-up you know the tents and whatever oh yeah absolutely yeah. now when you do these mobile lounges um, I, I know that one of the first ones I experienced was probably, God, had to be was years ago, years, like three, four years, at least four years, maybe five years ago, up in Detroit, okay? And there was a mobile cigar lounge there called City Smoke, and um, a guy named Tony owns it, and he, he took me out with it with some other folks. We just drove around Detroit. Okay, let me. Uh, I'm gonna mute you, Tony. Um, so if you need to come back in, just unmute. There we go. Um, so we drove all around Detroit, stopping off at different places, and it was really fun to be able to smoke in this driving around lounge. And also, when you stop somewhere, the curiosity factor kicked in, and people came out to check it out and even came in and looked at what you have. So do you have the same experience? You can rent yours to just drive around and just party? Uh, unfortunately with us, like I, a lot of us have like, I have an, uh, an Airstream Excel 500, it's considered a trailer. And unfortunately we can't drive, you know, with people in it yep, legally. Yep, yep. Uh, but I have seen it with with some mobile cigar lounges in our group where they actually have like an RV and they actually drive people around. I've seen that or a trolley, which is pretty sick. Uh, but yeah, for, for my business, unfortunately, we have to be stationary. Uh, it's considered not safe. <laughs> yeah, because this one was more like a um, like a bus that you would take to uh, you know, like a, a rental car bus. Right. But all decked out. Right. So you had seating inside and you were allowed to drive around in it. Um, how about you, Andy? What, what is your game plan? Um, I'm just going to set up a tent and tables and see if there's a market in the area, which I expect <laughs> there to be. There's no lounges. The closest lounge is an hour drive. So I think I think it will be a big hit. OK. And so where are you? You're up in Michigan, too. Yeah. Southern Michigan. Yep. 
Okay. All right. And then Brian. Yeah. So we have a 30 foot enclosed, um, kind of like car hauler trailer, um, eight foot ceilings, uh, eight and a half foot wide by 30 foot. Um, and when you walk in it, it's, uh, right now it's looking like a cigar lounge, you know, it's got, uh, a, a bench. It's got a few other, uh, big puffy leather chairs, um, humidor. So, uh, big cabinet humidor. Um, so, and then we'll have the outdoor experience as well. And then, uh, the ramp on the backside will actually drop down and be a patio for about five people. And, um, that's kind of, kind of how we're, we're hitting it. So bringing that experience to wherever we need. And, and Scott. Yes, sir. Can you hear me sure? now? Yes, I can. Ah, perfect. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yes. Uh, so my lounge is a custom 24 foot enclosed trailer. The passenger side folds down into a patio with railing with seating on the outside, as well as the rear folds down as well to create another small patio space. I'm running roughly about 350 square feet of space when I'm fully open. Yeah, all custom lounge set up. Uh, my cigars themselves are actually not out on this display the way I do it with the Colorado weather and the dry humidity. If I had them out, it'd be something that they dry out real quick, even in a regular humidor. So I actually do uh, customized Yeti style, you know, rotomolded molded coolers. And I have a digital menu screen on the wall that I can rotate and change in and out. Okay. Now, when it comes to cigars, it comes to stocking cigars, you all have, or at least have attempted to get wholesale contracts with manufacturers. And have they been receptive to this as far as giving you an account for that? Or have you gotten any pushback? I can only speak for myself. And most of them have been very open and very easy to connect with and communicate with, with what's going on. I've only had a couple of them and it was more, it wasn't what I was doing. It was the fact that since I was mobile, my tobacco license is tied to the VIN on my trailer rather than to an address. And there are a couple of them that since it didn't have a business address per se, I have a shipping address, but I don't have a business address, then they weren't able due to their rules open an account. I see. I see. How about uh, how about you, Brian? Any? Yeah, we... Um... We've been pretty um, open. They've been, uh, everybody that I've talked to is willing to kind of help us out, send us whatever we need. Um, even kind of dabbled into the uh, boutique side of it. And um, on that side, those guys are always more than welcome, more more than welcoming and um, will we'll help us out with whatever we need, so. All right, so boutique, you see the boutique being easier to deal with, or is it just the, the big guys just have more I's and T's to dot and cross? Yeah, I, I think that's probably what it is. Uh, you know, the boutique is, uh, you know, that, that one, they want to get their name, their brand out there. Um, and then it kind of gives that unique experience, too, to, to whatever venue you're at or to the guests that are coming in there. Um, give them something that they may not may not know of or may not have had or Okay. Now, now Kimberly Miner, who joined us earlier, but got onto the chat, um, which is good. So what, what are some of the cigar vendors that you are using today? Let's start with, go to Joey. Cause Joey's been around for a while. So what is your humidor stocked with? Yeah, usually. Um, so we deal to answer the questions that Scott and Brian said, we've been, we've been pretty receptive with wholesalers and big wholesalers that could carry out different name brands. Because unfortunately, sometimes a lot, a lot of big brands they want you to carry nine faces of the of their of their of their stock in, in your in your trailer or you know when you're talking to somebody. And for us, when we when we come in, we we want to be niche. All of us have different areas. Everyone those areas have different flavor profiles that they're looking for. So for me to carry one stock is is, is unfortunately something. Uh, that might be a little bit too hard, but, you know, no, typically we would like to keep it simple, you know, have a couple mild, a uh, couple medium, a couple full bodied. I think it's keeping it simple, having a uh, straight direct in terms of like knowing your clientele really does help. But a lot of those big companies, even though they might be hard to get into, there's other uh, wholesalers that have those big accounts that you'll be able to buy from. Like Myers and Dutch. 
yeah, correct, that you'll be yeah. able to get grab a lot of those brands. So what Scott and Brian are absolutely right, a lot of cigar companies are very receptive to having us, but some aren't, but there's other companies out there that will give you some some top tier brands. So you don't have to carry four or five of their faces when our, our, our mobile trailers can only carry like maybe nine to 12. You know right. what I'm saying? So hope that helps. And does, it, does anybody, then do you all like have a house brand or blends that you have that help that problem? We I do myself, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Brian. No, no worries. Uh, we plan on doing that, having a house blend um, with a couple couple different flavors as well to kind of um, hit that market. Yeah, Scott, you would. Okay. Yeah, I've got. I'm just uh, brought mine in here at the end of this last year and have three, so a Connecticut Habano and a Maduro. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And it makes it very simple. It, it's a great improvement for a mobile cigar lounge, especially to have your own house blend. Now, do you see a, uh, the, is the demographic in a mobile cigar lounge different than a brick and mortar in the sense of, are they, um, are, are they serious cigar smokers or are they, the party guys that are doing something and the cigars are adding to the adventure. Hmm. I think I, for myself, I think it's uh, a nice mix actually. I mean, I get a lot, I'd say probably 60% of my clientele are what I'd consider new cigar smokers, either smoke cigars very infrequently or they smoke cigars in terms of just like two or three times a year. So that's probably about 60% of my audience. And the other 40%, those are the easy ones to cater to. Those are the cigar men and women that know what they want. They know how it is. And they're just there to enjoy the experience and have a good time. So it's kind of a nice blend. And plus, it's a great way for me, at least, you know, uh, with my lounge, I focus on it being as, you know, I guess you'd call it as least intimidating as possible. So it's welcoming, it's open air, you know, it's very inviting. I try to make sure that everybody is welcome to come in, of course, of age that, you know, want to see and even check it out because there's a lot of people that I have turned into regular clients and customers that had never smoked a cigar before, but they're like, oh, we just love that, you know, you came in, we came in, you checked it out, you know, with us, you showed us everything and yeah, we love it. We love cigars. Now we're smoking cigars on the weekends, on our patio, yada, yada, yada. Scott, I think that's the big thing is, you know, I, I've had, you know, people come up to me and go, man, you know, smoke a cigar every now and then at a wedding, but I really don't know how to smoke it. So, you know, what do you, what do you need to do? So, I mean, big part of that experience is educating them, show them how to, you know, how to light it, how to cut it, how to enjoy it, what mm -hmm. to enjoy it with. And next thing you know, they're smoking, you know, a cigar every weekend or every, every other day, or, you know, they're, and they come back and they're buying stuff from you. And that's, that's kind of the biggest thing is, um, you know, a lot of people just, a lot of guys, you know, come up to you and say, Hey, you know, I'd love to smoke a cigar, but I really don't know, you know, the first thing about it. So what can you tell me? How can you educate me or how can you show me what, what I need to do? Oh, I know see, that's where I talk, where I love it. I always say, and I have to explain a little further because people tend to take it the wrong way. I have basically two types of clients. I have the client that knows exactly what they want. They look at the menu. They know that cigar. That's the cigar they like. They pick that one out. They're the easy ones. They're the great ones to just like, you know, you can just move through and it's like, yep, that's perfect. You know, next customer. And then I have the other type of customer that, and I say this in a positive way, wants to be told what to smoke. Right. They don't, they want to be shown, they want to be guided through the process. They want to be, have the cutting experience, the lighting experience, showing them how to do it. So they're not, you know, cranking out their bic and just roasting the heck out of the foot of the cigar. And it's like half of it's peeled back and it's, you know, it's just a mess or they cut, you know, the first inch and a half off the cigar because they think that's what you do when you cut a cigar, you know, they want to be told what to smoke. They want to be shown how to do it. So yeah, to your point, that's exactly what we provide. And it's a, different experience than what a regular brick and mortar lounge is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. do, do you sell besides cigars, do you sell accessories? Are you allowed to sell alcohol or can people bring alcohol in? What are the rules in a mobile lounge versus a brick and mortar? 
we will be at BYOB Lounge, a mobile lounge, um, just because of insurance, because of liquor license uh, issues, things like that. And I know that's kind of across the board with most of the lounges, but um, there's a lot of legalities and things like that involved in that that um, just really doesn't make it worth it on that side. Yeah, myself in Colorado, it is not legal to have a liquor license for a mobile business. They have to be tied to a specific address. So it's something that we are BYOB. If we are on private property, if we're at a public event, then the event holder has to have a festival license for alcohol and they can bring it into the lounge, but I cannot sell it and I cannot serve it. So I have to, it's all hands off. So usually at that, we have like wait staff that either comes in that are licensed, you know, insured, everything's covered on that end. Yeah. About Andy. Mm -hmm. I haven't looked at liquor license part yet. <clears throat> the tobacco license is a pain in the butt enough. Uh, Michigan's tough with the tobacco license. I know that firsthand from a friend of mine who almost yeah. spent a few years in jail for selling oh. cigars. It's, oh, man. A, it's a tough place. Like I know mm -hmm. that the Michigan law, as it's written, technically, if I go to Michigan on vacation and bring my own cigars across the state line, I am technically supposed to pay the tax on that to the state of Michigan. Yep, okay. Colorado. And if the you same don't, way. it's a felony. Yeah. See, I know we're not a felony. We're still in the misdemeanor state in Colorado. But yeah, theoretically, you're the first person to bring the cigars into the state or tobacco into the state in Colorado. You are required technically by Colorado state law that you have to pay the excise tax. <laughs> So, yeah. Wow. But you all you all obviously have tobacco resale licenses in your state. Um, Joey, I know from the experience I saw on your 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 um, uh, show, you've kind of quit your main job. This is your thing. Does er everybody else still work nine to five or 40 hours or 80 hours a week plus this uh, I, I am full-time at this you're full-time now Scott. yes yep okay. four years in operation mm -hmm. yeah uh, fully operation quit quit my job in april uh first of last year um yeah going back to the house blends i mean house blends are are super awesome i totally agree with what uh, Scott and Brian are saying, you know, we did over close to a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand of our house blends last year. Wow. So, you know, education is key. I love what Brian said, you know, you're, you're, you're telling these people and what Scott said, you're telling these people how to smoke it because I would say 85, 85% compared to the 50% are, are new smokers and they want the experience. And I think that's why why I'm hearing from the, these from these gentlemen, but from other people as well. They just want to bring that experience to you, and I, I find it very awesome to hear other business owners from around the country doing the same thing, because you know we all love the same thing. We love cigars, we love smoking them with great people, we love drinking, uh, you know, you know moderately. Uh, but I think those are all key factors of why we got into this business. We want to bring it to someone else, and we know what a good experience looks like, and we want to bring it to them. Now I think uh was it uh is this so Trinity Trinity Yes, is, that's mine. Yep. That's yours, Scott. So let yes, me just I went ahead and up. just shared a picture so it was on there for you. Yeah, let me let me just pop this up. So this is uh this is Scott's lounge. All right, what he's got going on. So this is a trailer. Very nice. Um nice little patio. You pop out. Um yeah, that's that that's pretty cool. Yep, how, seventy how inch four K T. Uh, roughly when it's open, three hundred and fifty square feet mm. of actual seating space. About the yeah, size seventy of my inch four K TV satellite on it. Uh, we're out here in Colorado, so we have the awnings. I don't have air conditioning in it, but honestly, for the most part in Colorado, if you can get in the shade, you don't really need air conditioning. It's comfortable. Now this time of year, it's a rough mistress to you know hang on to because the weather's cold and you've got to have heaters to surround the thing. So it's a little bit of a Jenga trying to get all the heaters inside of that and make it fit when it's all closed up. Cause everything goes back inside and folds up when I'm done. Okay. 
Yeah, because you need to have it open to have the experience. Yes, yes. Otherwise, you're too cramped. Inside. Yeah, there's no, there's no way. We've had a few rainstorms where people had to huddle in because of the wind, and it gets real cramped in a big hurry when it's like that. So, now how many, how many events do you do in say a month on average? Uh, for myself, uh, if it's like this time of year. I'm usually doing anywhere from about four to six a month in the winter. It slows down significantly for me. Now in the summer, I'm doing usually three to five a week from starting usually after about March Madness is kind of what kicks off what I consider more of my summer season. And I'm doing, yeah, three to five a week all the way through till usually late October. And then it slows down. I get a little bit more through the holidays, but, and then we get into like the doldrums of winter where we are right now, where right now I'm basically doing, uh, sporting events, you know, a few private events. There's not a whole lot of weddings right now in Colorado. So those won't kick up back up till usually springtime. So when you do events, you have, I imagine your model has a couple of different approaches. Obviously, if you're doing a wedding or a bachelor party or something, they're renting this out and mm -hmm. it's an exclusive to them versus you showing up at an event and it's open to the public to come and enjoy, right? Yes, yes, of course. I mean, our events are customized from start to finish. So if it's a black tie event, then everything gets dressed up. Everything is all set in there. We've got, you know, Frank Sinatra playing on the, you know, on the radio or on the stereo to have it going or whatever music they prefer. I'm usually in, you know, dress attire to fit the event that what we're doing, whether it's a wedding or whether it's, you know, just sort of a formal affair. And then uh, do a ton of stuff with businesses like Harley Davidson, where I'm in the mechanic shirt and jeans and, you know, we've got classic rock cranking on it and we've got banners flying and everything. It's just, we form fit it to the event is basically what it comes down to, but that's just the lounge side. We also offer for places that can't get the lounge in. We offer table events as well that br we bring it in, set it all up. We can do custom experiences in small spaces. Okay. How about uh, Brian or Andy or Joey? Yeah, our business model is uh, we've got a couple different custom um, packages. One for being, you know, just kind of like a retail store to, at a different venue, concert, different events around town, um, car shows, things like that. And then as well as having um, different packages with uh, different um, amounts of cigars available in those packages for like wedding parties and things like that. Uh, the guests. Um, as, goes as far as even having like uh, you'd have an open bar but you have an open humidor so you know the the bride and groom want to set a limit at you know x amount of dollars for cigars then the wedding party can come in and buy up to that and then then it's purchased after that so how does that work with a wedding because when i go to a wedding and i i love my cigars and i show up with the, the normal the thing goes on you do your dinner or whatever and then everybody starts doing their dancing and that part of the wedding and I find a few people in there that kind of like cigars and they kind of know me. And I was like, I got my cigars. I opened up my travel humidor and we step outside and we start smoking cigars for an hour and a half. And we're nowhere to be found. And the wives and the girlfriends are like, oh, where do you, well, come on, what are you guys doing? How do you, how do you man, how does, how does that get managed at a wedding? I mean, do these people like, like people disappearing from the wedding to go out to a lounge? Well, we're just getting into it, but I'm sure the majority, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure you we're going to have that case, but, you know, um, we've got a lot of outdoor wedding venue areas around us too. So, you know, it's, uh, I'm hoping to have that or the ability to have the, you know, access to the outside. So everybody's not just kind of taken, taken away from the inside. I think Joey can speak to this as well as myself in that, that it's <clears throat> it, it's in a couple of different ways. If you get, I've done a few weddings where the entire family and everybody is, you know, huge into cigars. I did a wedding for a family that came up from Florida and did the wedding out here in Colorado. And everybody was cigar smokers all the way to Nana in her eighties was enjoying a cigar. So it was awesome. Then like, but so then that's, that's just part of the reception. It was connected. It was open air outside wedding. They had a big tent, so I was just pulled up alongside of it, and it was just part of the event space. You never really disappeared the way that was set up. Now, I have had some where it's about timing, 
and knowing, you know, when the proper time to have the cigar lounge there. If you don't want to detract from the reception itself, then you put it in more of a, okay, we're going to do this for the wedding party before the wedding for three hours or something like that to where they can do their pre-photos or they're getting ready and they can hang out in the lounge. They can do that. Or it's something that we come in, we don't come in until after the dinner is over. So they do the wedding, they do the dinner, they're cutting the cake as they're getting the cake cut. I'm setting up. So that way I'm ready for, you know, when that's done to create that time to either like start of the night or end of the night, you find those niches where everything fits and then that's what works best for them. So you don't feel, because I have had a couple of weddings that I thought went really well, but unfortunately the bride was <laughs> a little bit disappointed that uh, the groomsmen and the groom himself spent most of the evening in the cigar lounge. Which they could do before the wedding or after yeah. the wedding. So you find those spaces and that's something I had to learn as well with this is that offering those times, you know, that saying, hey, what is your goal? What do you want to have this? I mean, it, this is something that can take over, you know, and it can keep people, you know, locked into that area. If that's not what you're okay with or looking for, then let me suggest maybe doing this before the wedding. Let me suggest doing this towards the end of the night of the wedding. So that way you've already gotten all your time with people and people are just wanting somewhere to sit down, have a drink, have a cigar, relax towards the end of the evening, you know, and let it wind down. Okay. Um, we just got uh, City Smoke. Tony Anderson just joined. Uh, Tony, thank you for coming in. Um, no problem. Thank gonna, you for coming. I'm going to take a, we're going to take a quick break here. I'm going to give a shout out to the sponsors for a couple minutes. And when we come back, I want to dig a little bit in what Tony's doing, because as opposed to having a trailer, Tony has a drive around. And I want Tony to talk a little bit about what he's been doing. He's been doing this for a number of years. So let me take this, this short break. About that. And today's show is brought to you by Casa Cuevas Cigars. In the 19th century, Juan Cuevas, Spanish immigrant from Santanda, began what was to be a family business which now spans four generations. Like others, fortunate enough to live and work in Pinar, the Rio province of Cuba, Juan commenced cultivating tobacco, turning it into a successful business. Following in his father's footsteps, his son Juan Jr. continued with the family business, successfully expanding it until events which took place in 1959 forced a dramatic change. Years later, in the Ciabo Valley of the Dominican Republic, Luis Cuevas Sr., Juan Jr.'s son, carried on the family tradition of handcrafting fine cigars in the family's cigar factory, Tabacalera Las Lavas. Today, Luis Sr. is joined by his son, Luis Jr., in the manufacturing and sale of premium long filler cigars at their factory, Tabacalera Las Lavas, in Santiago, Dominican Republic. So check out Casa Cuevas Cigars at www casacuevascigars.com and on their Instagram and Facebook channels. Introducing Blackened Cigars, M81 by Drew Estate. A dark, bold, and unapologetic cigar collaboration. My job is all about taste. So when James mentioned he wanted to create an exclusive cigar, I was stoked. Like Metallica, Drew Estate has some of the most hardcore fans out there. I've known Rob Dietrich for years. And when he approached me to collaborate on this, we couldn't be more excited. I mean, Metallica, Black and & Whiskey, and Drew Estate, what could be a better passion project? We needed to craft a cigar unlike anything in our portfolio. One that would take cigar fans on the deepest, darkest, heaviest journey into the mystical world of Maduro. Full-bodied with notes of espresso, leather, and dark chocolate. Blackened Cigars, M81 by Drew Estate. Before you light your next cigar, be sure to check out Cigar Medics, the makers of the patent-approved humidimeter. The humidimeter is a tool designed to display the relative humidity inside your cigar. With this device, there's no more guessing. Simply insert the probes into the foot or cap of your cigar, and you can instantly know if your cigar is ready to be smoked. 
Buy now on CigarMedics.com and see site for other cigar accessories. With the humidimeter, you'll know when to hold them and know when to smoke them. And today's show is brought to you by Bocock Brothers Cigars, a new and active brand founded by two Honduran brothers, Bryant and Douglas Bocock. The brand zeroes in on those folks that are looking for easy-to-smoke cigars inspired by unusual circumstances. Very importantly named after their very interesting and imitable last name, Bocock. Right now, Bocock Brothers is featuring their signature edition made at the A.J. Fernandez factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. It features an Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper, a Nicaraguan Habano binder, and a Nicaraguan filler, available in three popular formats, a Robusto, a Toro, and a Gordo. You can check out Bocock Brothers Cigars at www.bocockbrothers.com. And today's show is brought to you by Platinum Nova Cigars. Platinum Nova is a family-owned and operated premium cigar company. Only the highest vintage tobacco and the most skilled hand workmanship go into the making of each Platinum Nova cigar. This results in a timeless blend of art and craftsmanship. The Nova brand and the family's work are a tribute and an honor to their grandfather to always remember him and his infinite passion for the finest cigars. Their love for cigars started with their grandfather, a dedicated master blender, and entrepreneur in the cigar industry. So the next time you're looking for that exquisite cigar experience, pick up a Platinum Nova. You can check them out at Platinum Nova Cigars, www.novacigar.com, and on their Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter channel. All right, I'd like to thank my sponsors for without them, the show is always a little harder to do. Let's come back to the panel. Um, what I find interesting about these advertisements is um, the, a lot, some of them are legacy brands, um, growing, um, growing brands. When you think about what you're doing, your mission is obviously to start something you, or you're growing something. Is this something you want to move forward and eventually pass on to as a legacy through your family? Or is it something that you want to build and eventually sell, or maybe even franchise? What What is your thoughts on on how you run the business? And we're going to start with Tony right now at City Smoke because he's brand new, just came on board. And I want you to talk a little also, Tony, about what you're doing. Most of this panel here have trailers. You have this drive around lounge, which I was had the pleasure to drive in. So talk a little bit about what you do and how you address that question. Well, uh, first, thanks for having me on. Hello, everyone. I'm Tony with Anderson with City Spoke out of uh, uh, Flat Rock, Michigan. So uh, we're down here. I see you've got somebody from Michigan on here as well. Um, so uh, basically, you know, uh, we just converted a, uh, a shuttle bus into a smoke lounge. You know, we did everything but plain retired materials and and got it together. We seat about 15 people and, you know, we have ventilation on the bus, have a humidor on the bus. And um, we do some of the same events that you guys, you know, do, you know, weddings, festivals, um, parks, um, bachelor, bachelorette parties, things like that. And I got into this uh, about six years ago and things have been uh, going really well. So we are uh, in the process of expanding to our second mobile unit now. Um, so that's 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 a really good thing. So we should have the second one on the road <clears throat> by the spring. So okay. now is our you know is our uh, relative slow time, uh, but this year since the weather is has been uh, unseasonably you know pleasant. You know um, I had a last minute call today. That's why I'm late because we <laughs> we've been out since uh, about two thirty uh, doing a bachelorette party. So we just got back to the house and uh got things all cleaned up and things so um and my vision uh i just had a conversation with an attorney you know so i can franchise city smoke so um gonna get that ball uh, rolling really soon because there's a lot of people uh kind of jumping into it um but 
it all depends, you know, on their degree of commitment. You know, uh, if you guys have been doing this for a while or if you just got into it, you know, you know now that it's, really, it's a really big commitment. You have to make sure that you want to be into this. And I plan on, you know, franchising and uh, turning this into something really large and um, let my daughter take it over. You know, she's not a big cigar smoker, uh, but she likes being around what I'm doing. So um, she knows everything that I know, uh, not to the depth and to the degree, because uh, I'm still learning. You know, there's a lot out here to know, you know, so um, right. She's interested in, in in doing that and taking it and, you know, but she doesn't smoke and she wants to just be around the business of it. You know, we just signed a uh, a, a three-year commitment with uh, the Midwest Invitational Rodeo. So um, we're doing that. We have another three-year commitment with um, two of the UAWs uh, here in, in, in the Southeastern Michigan area. So um, we do a lot of personal things, but, you know, all of our corporate clients have become a whole lot bigger. And that's what we're focusing on uh, for 23. So we have uh, three on board right now. We have uh, three more we're in uh, conversations with. So uh, we're doing those things. We have also, um, there's a gentleman here in the Detroit area who has a, uh, a mobile bowling alley. So he and I <laughs> have paired together and done a number of events. So this whole thing, being able to get on the bus, get people on and drive around, has really opened up a whole lot of doors for me because a lot of times we, we just go to someone's house, pull up in the, in the driveway and we sit. And that was the original design for this. Um, and, you know, I had some consultants let me know and said, listen, if you could move around, the thing would be really great. And it has been, it has been, it has been, I, I tell you, it really has been. Um, so um, it, it's been uh, a blessing in disguise. It's a lot of work, but you know, um, Dealing with that that bus, that diesel is not cheap to run, it's not cheap to fix, <laughs> you know. But you know that that that's what I chose, and and I did that um, for a number of reasons, you know, um, because we we see it about twelve to fifteen people comfortably, you know. So uh, there's a few things we had to modify on the bus just to make it comfortable in the winter time, and uh, also in the summertime. Um, but um, it has been 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 a top-notch thing and I've been at it you know for a while and I, I wouldn't trade it you know I still have my regular job we booked um starting Memorial Day weekend someone's going to call us the Thursday before Memorial Day and want us to come right now <laughs> that Thursday Friday Saturday is going to be booked until about Halloween and then it's going to be Friday Saturday and some Sundays and then after that, it's going to get dead right after New Year. It's going to have twos and fews, and then it's going to pick back up. But uh, the fall is really popular. Um, so, but you know, that's my deal. All right. That's what I'm doing. How about you, Joey? What is your your thoughts on legacy or franchise or you do this till you retire? What What do you do? Yeah, you know, I, I initially I want to build this into a real business. You know, we we've been looking to expand, I think we're looking at the franchise route, but we also want to promote within. Uh, we're looking at other key areas that, that are highly, um, I would say, visible of being in those types of private events and markets. Uh, even for us, and, and congrats to everyone that have events, like we're booked, we have bookings all the way up to 2025 happening. Wow. People are putting the deposits in. Just to start off this year, we have around 350 events already booked. So um we're just looking to go deeper and heavier our team's ready our vision's pretty 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 strong and our goals are pretty strong so yeah you know uh, my son's three so <laughs> uh but i'm already putting him to work when i'm you know passing around things you know between me and the team members but he's gonna grow up into into a business where i'm not just gonna hand this off to him he's gonna work from the bottom up so he can understand every every mm -hmm. portion of the people behind it, the work behind it, the passion behind it. So, yeah, definitely. How about you, Andy? Yeah, I'd love it if the kids would take it over, but, you know, they're nine and six, so you got a while to go. But, um, like, my five-year goal is to start with the tent, uh, with Canopy, get the trailer if that's successful, and then open a brick-and-mortar and keep doing the mobile. But, you know, 
have a good mix, you know, have home base where everyone can come in the area, but be able to go out and share, share the experience with other people and hopefully bring new people into the, into this culture, this life that we love. Andy, what part of Michigan are you in? Um, uh, it's a little town called Sturgis. Um, it's right <laughs> between Chicago and Detroit, right yeah. on the Indiana line. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay. I've got, you know, an hour drive, I can hit three pretty big cities. You are you Scott? Uh, myself, you know, I'm looking at it as more of an expansion where I'm starting out. It's just me going right now. I do for big events. I have a few people that I bring in to help me if it's kind of a big populated event. But otherwise, it is just me going solo. So as I'm growing, I want to expand it. I want to adapt it to different things. Uh, one of my goals is version 2.0 of my lounge is going to be a custom double-decker bus where the downstairs is the retail space with seating and the upstairs is going to be open air with lounge seating upstairs where people and I can pull that in and set that up because that's something that I've seen. It's just a passion of mine. There's no real reason. It's ridiculous and I love it. So that's what I'm looking at. And then eventually, hopefully, you know, I'd love to see one of my children, you know, step in when they get of age to actually take this over or join me in this. But if they don't, then, you know, I'll run it as long as it's, you know, I possibly can or until the state closes me down and, <laughs> and then we'll go from there and see what happens. So no real like extra exit strategies already yet. So. Right on. Right on. How about you, Brian? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, um, would be, I, I partner a little bit of this with my brother. So, uh, you know, I've got a nephew, I've got two boys and I've got a daughter as well, but you know, at some point it'd be nice to kind of have something that's successful to hand over to them. I'd like to expand into it as well. And at some point do some type of, um, bottle shop, brick and mortar type, uh, type thing, as well as the, the lounge. My goal has always been an Airstream, but when I first started looking at those, um, I decided to go with the enclosed because that's uh, budgetary. That was the reason why. And uh, so maybe, you know, second trailer at some point, Airstream, and then uh, go from there and absolutely have something to hand down. Okay. And Hollywood Tony's driving out now, so it looks like he's away from his event. Tony, yeah, I am. What yes, what's sir. your view? What's your view on legacy or whatever? Well, my kids are grown in their 20s, um, not really into cigars, so I'm not sure. So for me, I'm just kind of doing it, trying to expand it year by year, day by day, month by month, and uh, build a business so I can quit my full-time job, make this a full-time job, and then see where it goes. Maybe I had a second Airstream, um, but I sold it because <laughs> I got too busy. So I was already planning on expanding. Um, but yeah, I'd like to get a couple of them and then maybe franchise it out here in Arizona would be a, something I could do and then maybe right. get into consulting to everybody that's doing the lounges I would like to be I think I could be a, a good consultant on design I'm pretty good design wise and stuff like that for building these things so like that would be my I think that's my passion really okay now that's a good segue question because one of the questions that was coming in I think Steve Newman asked this question if I wanted to get into this line of business what's what's the investment on the front end what what, what what's somebody what, what are they looking at depends how far you want to take it i guess you know um yeah, really. you know it depends on if you want to do just you know tent a trailer you want to do airstream um a, a bus you know something something you're driving um uh, you know that that, that kind of that would that would start your base and deciding where you're at and where you're going and then you know what what you want to spend. But from what I'm hearing from people, um, is you know you've got obviously demographics of weddings and bachelor parties and bachelorette parties and birthdays and things like that, and then you have corporate events. Have you seen? And it sounds like you've seen a demand from these from corporations to have these types of things you've seen a cigar culture growing in that world where it's becoming very acceptable um and 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 something that people want to do where there's, there's plenty of business i mean wherever you are there's corporations that just 
Are these corporations large corporations or small or somewhere in between? <laughs> what, what what's the view of that? I mean, like like um, Scott was talking about earlier with uh, you know Harley Davidson things like that, and you know Hollywood's at Bear Jackson. Um, just this past week, um, we partnered here with uh, Rat Rod Magazine. Um, they're going to be doing a um, Rat Rod build off, and uh, they start in Lincoln, Nebraska, and end up here in Illinois at a at a event place called Psycho Silo. And uh, we'll be there for the three days for a three day car show and the uh, the Rat Rod Festival. Um, so, I, yeah, I mean, I think since COVID, everybody's kind of stayed at home, was drinking bourbon a little bit more, and smoking cigars, enjoying themselves, and um, it's really starting to become more popular again. I think cigar sales and you know um like bourbon scotches you know their sales are up and i think people are just enjoying themselves more and i think that's played a big part of kind of the reason i moved forward was because you know looking at numbers and stats and statistics of uh sales everything's just kind of on the rise and you know why not the rest of you all think that's common yeah, I, can, I can i can speak for myself just today um at barra jackson I don't know how many hundreds of people I saw today, but today was a slow day. There had to be 10 to 20 guys that were wanting my business card for corporate events. So when you talk corporations, yeah, there's there's definitely money in, in corporate events um, for sure. And, and it's just a matter of getting the mobile lounge concept out there. Most people don't know we're out there. So it's doing these festivals and doing these other things and getting them seen so you can then get these corporations when they see you they're like you'd be great for team building or you'd be great for this like absolutely i'll do that absolutely but let me know um so yeah just even today a lot of people were asking corporations now yeah. i know uh, uh, go ahead no no yeah keep going i echo that because you know we've seen that pick up, even with, uh, you know, I call them boutique corporations, you know, uh, sm local small businesses, people with like one or two locations uh, here in, in, in Detroit, the Detroit area, um, because, you know, I do two Harley Davidsons here, you know, I do their bike nights and um, the a couple of cruiser clubs have me out and I do theirs as well. But, um, you know, that segment <clears throat> is always willing to do something, you know, and, and they always want, from there come the, the individual events, you know, um, uh, the UAW, I, mean, I think I've done at least 20 uh, birthday parties and at least uh, 10 weddings from that. So once they see you out there, they really want you to come and, and, and do this and do that. I mean, it, it's, it's just a huge thing. And you like uh, uh, Hollywood was saying, you know, uh, a slow day for a corporate event, you know, is, you know, a hundred people buying, you know, uh, cigars. And usually at those, they buy bundles, they buy boxes, you know, uh, in, in my situation, especially folks uh, with United Auto Workers, you know, those guys buy. And it's interesting how they do it because um, the president of one of the locals, uh, I befriended him. So when they get their profit sharing checks, they set up their picnic events. And that's when I come in. And it's, 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 it's like picking money from a tree, man. It is, it is bananas, I'm telling you. It is something. So the promotion is a multi-rung -la ladder. You reach out to, I mean, you, you do you do calling, you connect with people, you contact people. Is there other promotional things you do? Do you do advertising in local journals, magazines, newspapers, um, things that show up in your mailbox? H how do you get your name out there other than making phone calls and saying, hey, are you interested in this? You know, what, one of the newest and biggest uh, and successful thing for me has been uh, uh, um, to, uh, TikTok and Pinterest. Oh, hmm. those two have taken off. I, you know, we just started. I got my guy. You met, uh, did you meet Big O when you were here in Boston? Yeah, yeah. So Big O just started putting all this TikTok stuff out. And I, we must have got 10 calls yesterday. You know, he only has one out there. So now we're just grabbing content from everywhere. And uh, this Pinterest thing, everyone, I've gotten four calls today from Pinterest 
and we just posted the cigar stuff. You know, we took all of our bands and made a, a lamp out of it. And now people want to come in. Can you come and show us how to do that? And we can have a lounge there as well. So we do, you know, that has just opened up a whole lot of stuff. And that has been the biggest thing. And usually we visit a lot of lounges and whenever, every time we go somewhere, you know, we're branded up, you know, and, and people say, oh, what are you guys all about? You know, and that has, that's the, the biggest thing. Word of mouth has been our biggest push, you know, um, and, but since we start doing uh, more stuff on social media, the calls begin to flood. And the, the, the thing that, uh, second from that, when they call, when they see something we post, they want the merch. <laughs> it's been fly. I, I can't keep merch, man. Wow. We, this That's event amazing. we just had, I had this this on and and six people wanted it. So I got six orders. I took six deposits. So we got press the shirts, you know, tomorrow night. And that's it. So merch sales are uh, something not to be overlooked. So you got a little bit of merch, you know, put it out there, man, because it's gonna fly. So what, what are the other comments on that? You agree with uh, Tony's thoughts on that? Oh, I mean, I, I agree. I mean, everybody has raised such great points on all of this. I mean, just from to speak first on, you know, the growth and like the potential out there, uh, you know, and it actually kind of hits both points, actually. But uh, it's more of a look at it as we are emissaries for the cigar industry, being mobile cigar lounges, we are taking that experience to the public, to the people. We're not tucked in a shop and I'm not saying anything negative about brick and mortars. I love them, but uh, it's one of those where we are out there in that public eye for people that aren't smoking cigars, that people that may not be, you know, as quite aware of it. So when every time we put out a good experience and a positive experience that it shows that it's, you know, people behaving, not, you know, being crazy, you know, that there's not, you know, underage people running around that we're just this really positive professional experience that promotes the entire industry, you know, that brings everybody up. It's kind of a rising tide situation. Whereas like, you know, and the marketing and the branding, I mean, that is so important to speak to what he said about like merchandise. I mean, if you don't have your own merch in terms of shirts, hats, hoodies, cutters, lighters, you really should. I mean, I'm not going to say you have to, but I mean, honestly, every time I do a run of cutters, I do every year I do a run of custom Zycar cutters and I change them every year. And those are gone like that. I mean, they're just out the door. There's people that as soon as I announce that they're coming, I've got people lining up and putting in their money. They're like, okay, I'll take one. I want a couple. I need three for, you know, me and my buddies, we're going to get them. I'm going to give them as gifts you know, simple stuff like that, that can raise everything. And it's just, you know, to get yourself out there, you know, to speak to Tony's point about like, you know, they don't know we're out there that we're still kind of a young niche industry in the cigar world, where it's just, I mean, the best marketing I've had other than social media is just doing it, just being out there, getting to these events, you know, doing, you know, trade shows, wedding, you know, trade shows, things like that, getting out there, getting in front of people, letting them know you're there because it doesn't pop into their head. Then all of a sudden I'll do one wedding show and it's just kaboom. I mean, I'm just taking bookings for the next 12 months. You know, it's like, I'm getting married in 24. What dates do you have open? It's one of those things. Oh, I never even thought of this. I knew cigars, but I was just going to buy a box. I can do this. You know, it's just about, you know, showing what we have and being out there and being present. You got to commit to it if you really want it to grow. Yeah. And for me, a couple of people I've spoke to, like, <clears throat> as I've learned of this and started to pursue it, no one that I talked to ever even heard of it or thought of it. So it's like, we're in the ground ground floor here getting started yeah you guys are all coming in right now you, you you're, you're the ogs i would say like joey and maybe even tony and scott really are truly ogs in this right um, doing what you're doing and others are coming in and it's a it's beautiful like you said because you like you said it right scott you're bringing the culture to people as opposed to people finding going to a lounge or getting the guys together um that is just a brand new thing for this industry 
that is only helping this industry grow. And I would think that the the industry as a whole, the, the manufacturers, the brand owners want to start reaching out. You know, they want to start putting their their cigars in your mobile lounge. Um, it, it, there's no reason not to because it's going to keep this industry growing the way we want it to grow. I got a good, uh, quick question for the group. Um, you guys have mentioned doing a bunch of different types of events. Have you guys done anything with uh, car dealerships? I've done a little bit with car dealerships, some of their like higher end. We've done one with, uh, it was a Bentley dealership out here where they did kind of a car show that they do it twice a year. And they have us come out for that and set up. But I mean, for the actual just dealerships, nothing specific, but yeah, we've done some with that. Okay. And I want to tap into that because with sub the suburban collection out here, I do the Cadillac and the GM um, uh, anniversary day uh, and they have a new unveiling, um, like they have the new uh, electric Cadillac, you know, that's out and they're going to be featuring that. So they asked me to come for that. <clears throat> and um, they also have me at the uh, uh, Mannheim at the uh, at the auction. Get it, brother. Get it, brother. Yeah. Well, that's uh, what Holly, that's what Hollywood Tony right there is coming back yeah. from the Barrett auction. Yeah. So, and last year we did the the, the uh, North American uh, Auto Show. So, and this year it's in June. So we're going to be set up there. And uh, we also did the uh, Grand Prix here in Detroit. So. Those big events like that get you so much, so much leverage and, and, and so much play. It's ridiculous. Now, can you go? So here, here's a question I have, right? So some of these, you probably have to partner with them. I don't know if you got to pay for a spot, but if you go to, say, a football game, right? Can you go tailgate at a football game, bring your lounge in there in the parking lot? And and not have to pay anything other than parking. That's it. Is there a rule? Is there a rule that they've got because you're doing something and you're making money on it? What's your views on that? What in, experience in New Jersey, you cannot be in a in a um, in the stadium and sell cigars directly. You cannot be on the stadium <laughs> property. But but you can get very creative with it. Mm -hmm. So so you say. And so stadium parking lot, they won't let you do it? You can, because people people have done it, right? Yeah. I won't mention who, but uh, people have done it. But you're not allowed to sell cigars at okay. the property. So, and yeah, the unique call about, about what I'm doing is I have the tent set up, and then we tailgate. We actually have, a, you know, a pit. But so the point of sale and the point of exchange, words matter. What's the point of sale? What's the point of exchange? As long as the exchange happens on the bus, I can do whatever I want. Yeah. So we're not trying to say we're doing anything illegal. It's just, no, it's not illegal. It's not but, illegal. But yeah. yeah. In Colorado, for most of the professional like sporting events, things like that, uh, like let's for instance, like, you know, the Broncos, they have an application process for what they call panhandling or vendors. Right. And mm -hmm. you have to go through and apply. They have to approve. There are fees involved with that if you are on stadium property or Broncos property. Now, mm -hmm. outside of that, there is a ton of tailgating areas that are all private spaces outside of the stadium and out off of Broncos property. That is, as long as you're licensed for the area out here and you're legal to sell in that area, I can set up and I can do it. So you can get a license to pander for a day. Yes. Correct. Yes. And it'll actually, you can do it. Most of it, they do it for the season that you have to commit to all of their home games. So okay. that way you, they know you're going to be there because that is still part of what they consider the Broncos experience. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Because you know, that the point of exchange and the point of sale, I mentioned that because the, the lady from the state, when I was, you know, going through all my inspections and the lady from the state told me that I'm like, Oh really? Okay. Done. <clears throat> Yeah, because that was my that was the other question I had is that have you ever had an experience where you were at an event, whatever it was, and you got visited by the tobacco enforcement agencies in your state? I haven't had a visit from that, but um, at the state parks um, here in Michigan, I was at Belle Isle and DNR. <laughs> they, they came and like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, I had a group and they got off and they were smoking and he wanted to come inside my bus. I said, no, you know, but 
for for what reason? You know, uh, and he was questioning, and he was he was a, he was a bit uh, abrasive. And mm -hmm. had he changed his approach, he probably would have got what he wanted, but he did not. And there's nothing he could do about it. Anybody else have an experience like that? Nothing with tobacco enforcement, but real similar to kind of what uh, what he was just saying is, yeah, I did a wedding. It was in one of the national parks out here in Colorado. And that was one where you had to have the permits to be able to do that. And they had to know where you were going to smoke. They could only smoke in my lounge. I had to have it set up that nobody was taking the cigars out of the lounge and walking around just for fire danger. It was up in the mountains, up in the trees and everything. It was in summer, so it was dry. So we actually, I had the uh, same way the DNR showed up. They wanted to see what everything was going on. And, you know, with mine being open air, you can see it clearly. It's all open up in there. But they just wanted to make sure that, you know, nobody was walking around with lit cigars for fire danger, things like that. And, you know, that we had the proper permit to be doing that in the national parks because I did have to have a separate permit for that event which, you know, that was fine. Everything was in order. And yeah, then they were cool. And yeah, I gave them my business cards. And, you know, it was like, hey, maybe we can get you, you know, do an event with us. So <laughs> I was going to oh. say, you got, you got a lead from it. That's awesome. <laughs> you, you know, it's pretty important. It's just what everyone's saying, especially if you're looking to plan to do something like this, like in New Jersey, National State Parks, you're not allowed to smoke at all. Found that out uh, when we had to oh. get a refund back. <laughs> but uh, I would say anyone who's looking to start this up, like different stadiums have different rules. Like yep. Sometimes you can panhandle, sometimes you can't. Uh, so you cannot put, do not even try to put the the team logo. On, on, oh, on no, you would be in oh. big trouble. Yeah. Like I said, so people might be like, hey, this is a great idea. I could be right outside and start selling like, you know, uh, uh, the, the football team's thing. So, yeah, but you could be wearing jerseys. Yeah, but bro, you, they'll they'll get you for it because it's really it's, it's a trademark. Yeah, it's a trademark. You can't put like a you can't put a Giants logo. I'm just saying yeah, but you can't logo. wear the you can't wear a Giants jersey. But you can't sell it. Like you no, no, not selling own. it. But you can all be wearing them. Yeah, correct. Right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. It, Watch but your licensing. What, yeah. What, yeah. Yeah. Bunch of licensing, <laughs> and they. I. I'm sure. Even with all of us compared, we cannot beat their lawyers. Um, oh so, no! They'll they'll, just bury <laughs> yeah, us. they'll dance around us. They'll they'll but, laugh at us. <laughs> but I would say is every state. You know, we do have our federal law, but every state has their own tobacco law, and then every Perfect. state has their own where can you smoke laws. Right. Florida is kind of fun. Sometimes it's kind of like open-ended but states like i feel like colorado and even even in uh, montana the, there's no smoking lounges they all have to be private like sometimes we forget that hey it's a great idea but the first thing i ask you i ask the person is like hey do you know your state laws well because and, and to, give, to go even finer to that point is know your local laws Correct. there are places you know sure i'm state licensed i've got everything and but there are out here, there are county licenses, there are city licenses, and there are places in certain cities where you are not allowed to smoke at all. Oh, yeah. And you have to know that it's it's your responsibility as a yep. business owner to know that. I mean, I've had numerous people in one suburb of Denver that they'll hit me up, you know, they'll want to book me and I'm like, okay, you know, send me your address, where are you located? Where would the event be at? You know, I look at it and I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm not allowed to operate in that area. Yeah. You know, you've got to know the rules and they change. That's one of the difficult yeah. things about owning a business like this is it's not just a brick and mortar where you know those laws and those rules. You've got to know broad base. You've got to know, you know, this city, you can yeah. do this, this city, you can't do this. I mean, we've got some out here that are fighting to ban flavored cigars in certain cities. If that goes through, then I've got to know that those have to come out of my humidor before I go to that event, because they cannot be in there, even if I'm not selling them, they cannot be in there. So it's one of those where you you really got to take the time. It's not just something where you're up, oh, I've got my state license, and I've got my tobacco license, and I'm good to go. No, there is so much more. And then there's business rules, and their parking lots and their properties. I mean, it's on and on and on, you really have to stay on top of it. Okay. Yeah, because I would think like here in Florida, I know the tobacco laws are pretty laxed as far as what we can do, where they freedom state. Um, but, you know, something like bike week, I think would be ginormous. Okay. Oh, yeah, that would be like huge. This. That would right. be huge. I mean, just bike week, bike Oktoberfest, those kinds of things just got to be mm -hmm. huge for something like this.
Guys, I'm being summoned by the wife. I got to run. Sorry, I was late. But uh, hey, look, thanks for joining, Tony. Guys, uh, I'll be reaching out on on the book and friending all you guys, so we can talk more about uh, individual things that's going on. Uh, especially uh, Andy, since you're in Michigan, we can talk about some things, yeah. maybe collaboration. So nice meeting you all. Take care. Yeah. Thanks, Tony. Yeah, have a great night, weekend. Awesome. Well, we are coming up. We we are beyond the hour as it is. I don't know how long you guys want to stick around, but um, I, I would just think that um, one of the things that I know that our, our friend Steve Newman has started and you guys are, are part of is this uh, Cigar Mobile Lounge Association group. Um, people, if they want to know more about it, they can go check that group out. They can see what's going on. Um, e easy way to contact you um, if, if they need to, um, feel free to put your, uh, your, your website address in the chat. Um, and when I finalize the art, when I finalize this and I post produce it next week, I'll make sure I put in the article, all of those in there. So people can reach out to you if they're in your area to, to contact you. Um, and maybe it'll, it'll help you already fill in your already booked schedules <laughs> <laughs> yeah um I'm, I'm without questions now it's unscripted so i've run out of questions <laughs> um i'm going to leave it to the panel um is there anything that we haven't touched on that you you think is important for consumers or even brand owners to know and understand about this growing in this part of the industry well one thing I want to say is, you know, Steve, I put together for Mobile Cigar Lounge Group. Um, I've met some incredible people on it. It's just a group of awesome people who are passionate by cigars. They want to bring the experience there. Uh, I think it's a growing group as well. And I, I you know, I, I love what I do. You know, uh, I see some of you that you have your full time jobs ready to go, ready to go full time with this. You know, that was me, you know, you know, last year, like and two and a half years in the making so it, i'm just happy that uh, people are like chasing their dreams their goals i mean that's the american dream right you want to do something and for us we get paid to drink and smoke for a living you know that's a joke i love to say um so thanks steve for putting this together boss and jimmy thanks for for allowing us and giving us a space to talk amongst each other uh, it's a growing niche you know we have people here with people who are just about to you know get their business going to people who are you know four or five six years in the making looking to add another mo mobile cigar unit looking to uh build you know different state lines so it's awesome just to see the different kind of in the spectrum of where we're at so but we all are here why because we we love cigars and too you know we love bringing the cigar experience somewhere else we we love our uh our brick and mortars but i love meeting new people i meet some of the most incredible people over cigars so I just love what I do. Well said. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Couldn't have said it any better. It's yeah. one of those where I always say, you know, I always laugh with people that I only work about, you know, three hours a day, <laughs> the hour and a half to set up and the hour and a half to tear down. That's about all I work. The rest of it, I get to chop it up with customers and people and smoke cigars. And, you know, this is my job. I love every minute of it. I mean, you've got to love cigars. You got to love the industry. It's got to be a passion for you. Because it's something that if you've got that passion, you can grow it and build it and turn it into anything you want. I mean, it's just limited by, you know, you. That's the only limitation behind it. And, you know, it's something that if you're looking into and you want to do it, you know, check it out. You know, we can always use more of them. We are definitely not in a saturated state. So, <laughs> and I'm all for, like, I started... Uh, I was the first officially licensed one in Colorado. And I believe as of this spring, there will now be three others in the state mm. that have come up and I've met each and every one of them, great people. And, you know, it's great ways to collaborate. I'm all about making, you know, more pie, not getting my bigger slice of that pie. I'm about making yeah. more. So Scott, being in Colorado, actually there's a good question here. So you're in ski country. Yes, right? sir. And you get up in the ski resorts, obviously it's probably hard to sit inside a resort and smoke a cigar. Do you yes. go to resorts and camp out there and have a place for people to go? 
Uh, normally, I don't go to resorts just surely for the fact that a lot of them do have restrictions against that. Actually, most of the ski resorts up here are very anti-tobacco in that set. So it's one of those. I do a lot of private events, a lot of okay. events for people that live up there or just wintering up there or up there for, you know, this two week period. And they have me come up. I usually do. I've done the same group up in the mountains every December. They book me out when they're there at that event. They book me for the next year. They have their dates down. So I come up and I do. Uh, it's a two day event. So it's a nice getaway for me and my family as well, because we book a room and the family goes skiing and hangs out and does a, you know, all those things. I do my work. I join them afterwards. So. How about you, Tony? What What is your uh, closing comments? Oh, I don't have any. We're a growing group, I guess. Um, I think, like Scott said, there's room for everybody. There's room for more. I think it's a good thing. I think getting get together like this and everybody kind of collaborating and trying to um, bring us all together and get the more of us that talk about it, the more that we're going to be known. So, and I've talked to people even today, like I said, at Barrett Jackson, they're like, this is really cool. And I never ever thought of this. And I tell them about you know, there's like 55, 60 of us now in the United States are like, really? And they never knew that. So I, I'm not just promoting myself. I'm promoting everybody in the group because as a group, we need to do that to, to show awareness that we're out here to bring that experience to the people. How about you, Brian? Yeah. Um, you know, um, this group is kind of what kind of pushed me over the edge of making the leap. Um, I've been involved, like I said, you know, kind of researching it for a long time and um, that's the nice thing. What Scott was talking about the passion, uh, you know, um, everybody's got passion uh, about, you know, the cigar industry. I mean, even from um, the, the, the makers, the, the boutique side of it to um, any lounge owner. I mean, you walk into any place and, you know, you're in there to smoke a cigar. You're going to have a good time. You're going to socialize. Um, you're going to meet new people. You're going to, you know, you walk in, you know, next thing you know, you walk out as friends and you're back there the next time and smoking a cigar with them or, you know, you're at the at their house on the porch, you know, smoking a cigar. And, um, you know, that's the great thing about the brotherhood and the sisterhood of the of the leaf. It's just it's phenomenal. And, uh, you know, I appreciate all that Steve does for the group and um, and everybody else that puts puts everything into this. Um, you know, we've we've kind of been hitting it pretty hard. And I think, uh, like you said, you know, um, we're all kind of the start of the founders here and it's only going to grow from here so excited to see this very good andy closing comments yeah i thank steve for organizing us mobile people together <clears throat> um i've got great ideas from from hollywood he's shared a lot of good information um scott is who kind of got me started on it the whole idea and when i saw your your trailer showed on cigar dojo um i started talking to one of my friends and he's like you got to do it you're so passionate about cigars it's all you do all you talk about you need to get going like what can you do so here i am and then i ran into steve and and now we're on with you and spreading the gospel that's what i love to hear and that's that's terrific and Steve actually chimed in a moment ago and said, what's going on with the mobile cigar lounges is kind of akin to the food truck popularity, right? Yeah. Started small and now they're everywhere. I think we're going to see this continue to grow. More people are going to get involved. It's a, it's a route into an entrepreneurship to do something that you absolutely love and, sh and sharing with others that are passionate about the leaf and that's what it's all about you know it you're bringing common-minded people together forget the politics forget the religion it's all about what we're smoking what we're enjoying and having great conversation and this has been a terrific show and i appreciate everybody for taking the time out of your day to join and talk about what you have going on so everybody there's uh in the chat you'll see the different um mm -hmm. uh urls to the different uh different websites for these different lounges, check them out. If you're in the area and you're looking for something, you got an event coming up, you got, you work for a company, you want to do something cool with your company, you know, your cigar smokers in your company, there's the place to go. Have fun with it. Enjoy it. Bring business to these folks because
they're doing something awesome. So I want to thank everybody again. I want to thank my sponsors, all the viewers. And until then, have a great night. Appreciate it, guys. This thank has you, been Jimmy. Thank you. totally thank awesome. You, Jimmy. you guys have a great weekend, guys. Have a great weekend. Great seeing y'all. Thank you.